Now you fill it up with the sand though. Put your plug in so that it starts taking the right shape for that plug. And it's nighttime, so I can't show you outside where I'm going to lay this. I put it on top of an old milk carton. But keep in mind that since it's wet, it's going to take patterns off of whatever you lay it on. Just like when we put the patterns on here, if you lay it on top of a milk carton or something like that, or even on concrete outside, it's going to take intake those impressions. So I put it on top of a towel, let it dry in the sun, and then we'll do it again tomorrow and see how much more we can get it to hold. Here's our stretched canteen. I only wound up stuffing sand into this twice and because the leather is a little bit lighter than the first one that I made I haven't, uh, I'm going to stop putting sand into it right now because I'm a little worried that I'll overstretch it and damage some of the stitches and I hope that it already hasn't happened down here on this end. But I just poured out these two containers full of sand which is nearly three quarts. So once we line this with pitch, it ought to hold over two quarts of water. The last thing I do, as far as stretching it and dealing with the sand though, is I take BBs, and you could use lead fishing weights, but I put these in there. and then shake them around to make sure that all that sand is scoured out. and most of the rest of our sand should be out of there. At this point, we can finish dyeing it. So go ahead and get your dye back out and finish dyeing the entire outside of it. And once this dries, we'll go ahead and put the wax on it. This next step may not be completely necessary, but I did it on my first one and it seems to be a good idea for some insurance. This is melted pure beeswax. Um, I've gotten mine at a honey farm before. You can probably order it online. It's the same stuff they use for 100% pure beeswax candles. And here's our canteen. What we're going to do is paint this onto the outside of it in a thin layer and let it soak in. And what I do to make sure that it's soaked in is I have the oven warmed. You could put it out in the sun, but I put it in the oven for about 15 minutes or so on each side to make sure that it's soaked in. And I do two coats on each side. You want to make sure that you don't drip it. But once it's all melted, Take a cheap paintbrush and just paint it onto the outside of your canteen. You can see the way that that's solidifying. That's why we're going to put it into the oven to make sure it's completely melted in. You could heat up the wax itself a little bit more but when it's in the oven it'll actually heat the leather also which will help on your second coat help it soak in a little bit more. This may sound a little dangerous but I only have the oven heated up to 200 degrees. I have a towel in there so that if any of this wax drips off of the actual canteen it won't drip down into the bottom of the oven. Now I've done this before. As long as you keep the temperature low, you shouldn't have any problem. Go ahead, 
stick the canteen in there and we'll let it sit in there for about 20 minutes. Our canteen has been heating for about 20 minutes. And you can see that the wax is melted in. Let's go ahead and put a second coat on it. Also make sure that you have the edges painted with wax. You can do that from both sides. But you can see how once it's preheated the wax soaks in a little bit better. And once you have your second coat Go ahead, reheat it again until it's all soaked in, and then flip it over and do the same process a couple times on the other side. We're now at probably the trickiest and most crucial part of this entire process. What we're going to have to do is line the interior of the canteen with pitch to ensure that it's waterproof, and we're going to have to line the entire interior of it or it still can leak through in some area. This is pitch from the first one that I worked on. You can pour it out of your pan. I just leave it in there because it's difficult to get all the residue out of there anyway. This is solidified, but when you get your hands on this stuff, it'll be in a form like this. Like I said, I ordered this from Townsend and Sons online. It's a historical supplier. But we're going to go ahead and put this on a low heat. When I used to work with this, I'd put it in a double boiler, basically just using a can as what I melted it in, and then put it inside warm water. With this, you're going to need it a little bit hotter. So, get it on a low heat, and it'll take quite a while for this to liquefy. Keep a close eye on it, because the last thing you want is to have any kind of drips of, of this particularly on yourself because it'll burn you but especially on anything around your counter and keep it on a low heat don't make it too high or so that it will actually burn so carefully heat it slowly our pitch has been on the stove for about an hour and 15 minutes and you can see this totally liquefied and it's very hot now is the time to pour it let's go ahead and do it when you do this, it's advisable to do it with gloves. I don't because I like to have more, be able to manipulate things better with my hands. I'd make sure that if you touch this pot handle, you have some kind of a pot holder. Make sure you have some kind of a cloth under here in case you spill any of this. And when you pour it, make sure that it's a metal funnel. If you use a plastic one, it'll melt it. So let's go ahead and put our canteen upright. I'm going to turn the burner off. We're going to take our pitch. And pour the entire pot down into the canteen. Take out your funnel. And I would move it back and forth initially along the seam carefully go around one side and carefully do the other and then pour it all back in the pot. Now we're going to let this canteen cool and then do it a second time. Make sure that we've gotten the entire interior of this. So far I don't see any pitch that came out through any of our stitching holes. So we're probably in pretty good shape with this canteen.